Hi, everyone, and welcome to the summit. Thanks for attending this session. I'm Neil Fadness. I'm uh, Director of Developer Ecosystem, and I'll be presenting this session and would like to thank you, um, and as well as my colleagues, Meher Tenjukian, Piyush Gupta, and Kevin Porter, for their help in putting this together. Meher is here, and he's managing the Q&A channel. Thanks, Meher. I'll be taking your questions at the end. Please use the Q&A interface to submit your questions. In case uh, you are unable to, we are unable to get to your questions during this session, we'll get back to you. And please also join the Slack channel in the Developer Hub uh, to continue the discussion. So the, the session is about multi-site clusters for strong consistency and resiliency. Uh, some of you might have noticed that this title differs from the one that appears on the agenda, which talks about multi-region cloud architectures. Rest assured, it is the same session. And um, to, um, in this summit, uh, Aerospike is announcing uh, Aerospike Database 5.0. And a main feature, a, a, a prominent feature of that release is multi-site clustering. Just prior to this session, there was a session on XDR, XDR 5.0. Uh, there are two paths to multi-site clustering. One is XDR and the other is multi-site cluster. XDR essentially deals with multiple sites, uh, uh, multiple clusters on multiple sites, and they are synchronized using asynchronous replication, whereas multi-site cluster also deals with um, multiple sites, but it's a single cluster and the replication happens synchronously. So that's the major difference between the two. But together, they form a solution for your global data infrastructure needs. So we're going to be talking about multi-site clusters uh, for strong consistency and resiliency in this session. So accelerating global transaction is a trend that we see all across today. So Global transactions are accelerating both in numbers as well as speed, and that is essentially driven by the consumer or user behavior as well as expectations. Users just like you and me are everywhere. I mean, they're, they're globally connected. They are always on, and they respond. They, they expect immediate response from businesses, and that is driving businesses to be always on as well and to be responsive to their partners and customers and, uh, and, uh, and have the infrastructure that can meet these changed consumer expectations uh, and behaviors. So when you send money to your buddy, uh, you expect them to get that money immediately within seconds. Uh, and the buddy is also expecting to use that money for, for whatever they need to do with it. Uh, similarly, when we are tracking a par package or parcel that we are expecting, we, uh, we expect, it, irrespective of whether, where it's coming from and what route it takes, we expect the tracking information to be up to minute and accurate. And when we order things uh, on an e-commerce site, our expectations these days are, you know, delivery within hour. So things are accelerating. And in order to keep up with the changed in the you know ex increased expectations of businesses of consumers the businesses have to have the platform and especially the database that will enable and speed up global transactions database in particular have to be multi-site it has to have global footprint it needs to be active active all the sites are able to service requests and if one site fails uh, the application fails for smoothly across the, rest of the, uh, the other sites that are available. The data has to be consistent. You cannot base your business on lost, dirty, or stale data. It has to be, data is a kind of rock solid foundation of your business. And uh, the solution has to be highly available. And um, this, you know, in distributed setting, in the global setting, various failures will happen. Nodes will fail, and uh, 
links will fail, the sites will go down, and your business still has to continue to go on. The platform has to provide that capability. Last but not least, um, it has to be efficient. And uh, basically, when you buy this any solution, you don't have to pay a lot of money, and when you're operating it, it has to run smoothly and reliably. So, Airspike is uh, announcing to, uh, in the summit a multi-site cluster for global transactions with exactly this need uh, in mind. So, let's so sort of, let me sort of briefly give you the lay of the land in this in this session. So we are going to talk about what and how of multi-site cluster. Uh, then we will briefly talk about uh, how developers need to deal with it. Um, and finally, we'll look at specific examples of customers actually using real life case studies uh, to make it real. So let's talk about what and how. What is a multi-site cluster? I mean, as the name suggests, uh, it is a single site cluster that spans multiple sites. It's in a way stretched across multiple sites. And you can deploy a multi-site cluster in a, in a heterogene heterogeneous as well as hybrid environment. Uh, a site can be in a private cloud or a public cloud or across multiple public clouds. Um, you can, there's a lot of flexibility as to how you choose a, a site to be. It is configured in strong consistency mode. Um, Airspike allows the flexibility to choose a cluster to be configured, actually a namespace within a cluster, which is equivalent to a database or, or a schema, to be configured in either availability, AP mode, or strong consistency mode. And the business, the, the target use case here for multi-site multi clusters uh, is meant with strong consistency in mind for global business cases, global business transactions. So third, and uh, the next thing is the rack aware data distribution. And um, this is not a benefit, but it enables key benefits of multi-site clusters. One is uh, it enables performance and it also en enables availability, both critical. And we'll get to see some of this in greater detail in the subsequent slides. Aerospike multi-site clusters are also resilient to most of the failures that we'll see in distributed environments, including node, site, as well as link failures. Last but not least, it is optimized and has proven performance and uh, uh, reliability. It has been in business, uh, has been uh, uh, Aerospike cluster has been out there in the field for almost a decade, and uh, it brings a lot of experience and uh, work that, goes in, that has gone into it. Uh, so the key new capability that is enabled in this announcement is the large geographical separation between, uh, between sites is now supported. And that's a big deal because hard technical problems um, uh, have been kind of solved in this, including data migration, latencies, new failure modes. They have been addressed, tested, and even deployed. And all that experience and work uh, makes it possible now to make it a fully supported offering. So quickly look at what the alternatives might be. So uh, database with di distributed transactions, uh, two-phase commit type, those are, we know, slow, expensive, and they don't scale as well. On the other end of the spectrum might be NoSQL solutions that scale well, but they have consistency issue. They, the data could be stale, lost, and you might have to deal with inconsistent data that you cannot use for global business transactions. So let's look at some of these attributes that, um, that uh, Aerospike has, Aerospike multi-site cluster has, and uh, and uh, you know, uh, go a little deeper into that. 
So let's talk about strong consistency. Strong consistency, consistency has been with Aerospike for, uh, since 4.0, which was a couple of years ago in 2018. Uh, and it, it continues to be there. That, that's good news. Uh, and uh, but it is. Uh, we, let's discuss that briefly. There's going to be another session which focuses on certain aspects of strong consistency. That session is developing for strong consistency, which comes right after this session. Uh, you might check that out today or later on demand. But briefly, sync, uh, strong consistency has in that in SC mode, uh, Aerospike. Uh, does synchronous replication to all replicas. When you update a particular piece of data, it is synchronously replicated across all replicas. And basically, it, uh, uh, the, the philosophy is writes a process sequentially. So there is only a single version. No multiple versions are created so that there's no need to fork and then subsequently merged, which can lead to stale data issues, uh, resolution of conflict, and potentially loss of data. So with strong consistency, the guarantees that an application gets are there's no loss of committed rights, there are no dirty reads of uncommitted rights, and no stale, stale reads uh, happen of older committed rights. And these guarantees have been validated by, validated by a third-party testing, Jepson testing. Um, and as, uh, as you may know, Jepson testing is a kind of standard when it comes to consistent, consistency in a distributed setting. So that is strong consistency across sites. Let's talk about rack-aware data distribution. Uh, when we, so just, just sort of stepping back how data distribution happens so that we are familiar with the terms. So data is distributed in multiple partitions, basically, uh, and there are 4,096 partitions in uh, Aerospike in which all the data fits. Each data, each data partition has uh, uh, replicas, and that is governed by, how many replicas is governed by uh, replication factor. So it has replication factor number of replicas, and all the replicas are distributed across the nodes in the cluster. And what rack-aware data distribution is referring to, uh, whenever we say rack in this in this context, in the context of multi-site clusters, it is a rack is equivalent to a site. So uh, typically, replication factor is set to be the same as number of racks. If we do that, the, what rack aware distribution guarantees is each site has a replica of each partition. So in other words, all, all sites, each site has a copy of the entire data. And that's a desirable thing because it not only allows your local reads to happen locally because you have all the data locally, uh, and that can be very fast as opposed to having to go across a site, which can be order or orders of magnitude slower. So it enables performance. And rack aware distribution also enables availability because each site has a copy of the entire data. Uh, so if other sites or sites go down, there's a way that you can, uh, there's possibility to sort of uh, enable access to all that data. The typical configuration in a multi-site cluster is each rack is identical, has an identical system capacity in terms of number of nodes and sizing of nodes. Typical configurations we have, we are suggesting now are either two racks with replication factor of two or three racks with a replication factor of three. And obviously more number of sites uh, are possible, other site and replication factor choices are possible. For example, you can have a three site cluster with a replication factor of two, that's possible for various reasons. Uh, we won't get into the details of that, but uh, those things are possible and supported. So let's dig a little deeper into how multi-site clusters enable resiliency through outages. 
So one thing to remember is uh, all the planned events, uh, rolling uh, updates, patch updates, maintenance, all those planned events are, they work just like a single site cluster. How about unplanned events? When you have actual failures, uh, node failures, connectivity failures, site failures, good news is they are seamlessly handled, most of them. And we will get into the detail in the next couple of slides, but there are a couple of points I want to make here. One is the detection and recovery from failure is quick. It, within seconds, the cluster is able to detect the failures and, uh, and recover from it. And second point is, um, as part of the recovery, there is data migration updates that might happen for, for the affected partitions. However, the partition remains available during the migration updates. And we'll, so those are two key points. Uh, so let's just briefly go into how that is done, just to give you a flavor of uh, the underlying mechanisms. So each node maintains the roster. Roster is a term that we use for the original state or healthy state of the cluster, which includes the, the nodes in the healthy state as well as the, the map of the replicas across those nodes. So that's called the roster. Each node has it, and that is static. That doesn't change. Nodes are mesh connected, and they are constantly exchanging information in terms of heartbeat, and they're telling other nodes what, who they can see, who they cannot see. And using the heartbeat mechanism, the cluster is able to figure out what the failures are in the, in the system and, and what the uh, new cluster should be, who, what nodes are able to talk to each other and who should, uh, what, what the membership of the new cluster should be. And with that information, uh, the failure is detected and a new cluster is formed within seconds. Uh, key thing to remember again is uh, the, a lot of the algorithms that uh, Airspike has implemented are deterministic uh, based on the new uh, cluster membership, and every node can essentially make those decisions independently, and if, and that's what makes it really quick in terms of in terms of recovery. So as we said, partition remains available during migration updates. Uh, another mechanism to make to keep things available during cluster transition is if you send a request to uh, a node that uh, from which uh, data has moved, the partition has moved, uh, the node basically proxies that request and uh, the client doesn't have to resubmit that request. So all of, all of these things are happening kind of uh, in the background without client uh, or application noticing it. It's kind of adaptive and dynamic system uh, and client is, and the application doesn't have to be aware of it. Also, migrations are done efficiently. Uh, a lot of effort has been put in, by engineering team to make these uh, uh, data transfer and uh, efficient and reliable. So let's take an actual example of failure and see how, it, how the system takes care of it. So let's first talk about a node failure, and uh, so this is a three-site cluster, and it, each site has three nodes, so it's a nine-node cluster with a replication factor of three, and node one fails. That's the failure situation, and we are taking two partitions on node one as examples. There are obviously a lot more partitions on each node, but these are kind of examples. One is uh, a master replica. So green partition is a master replica and yellow is a non-master replica. So those are two example cases. And whatever happens to these will happen to all the master and non-master replicas on node one. So the rules that are applied are, and th these are the kind of assertions that uh, are held true in, a, in any given cluster. One is 
each partition must have one master. So if you lose a master partition, somebody else has to assume, one of the replicas has to assume the master role. And in this case, the, as you can see, uh, the next in line replica becomes the master uh, on node six in this case. And sec so, uh, so that's what happens for the master replicas. For all the replicas, master and non-master, the next set of rules are applied. One is, the first one is basically you have to maintain replication factor for each partition. So if you have lost a replica, then you have to create a new replica in order to maintain replication factor for each partition. And the second rule, which is uh, coming from rack aware distribution is at least one replica for each site. So if you have to create new replica and site one has to maintain at least one replica for the replicas that it has lost, clearly it means that it has to create new replicas. So new replicas for the failed uh, replicas get created as, as is shown on node two and node three. And with that, the both the two invariants, one master per partition and replication factor, number of replicas for each partition, is attained and the cluster becomes operational again. So all of this happens fairly quickly. So the next, uh, we will look at a site failure or cluster split situation. And in this scenario, as you can see in the picture here, site one is going down. And um, the cluster split situation also happens to work very similarly. So uh, in the case of cluster split, site one will not be able to talk to site two or site three. So the cluster is split across site one on one side and site two and site three on the other. Those, those are two subclusters, if you will. So let's talk about the cluster split scenario here because uh, both site failure and cluster split end up uh, behaving or you know recovering in a similar fashion. So in the cluster split situation, the decision to be made in each subcluster is whether a given partition can be served, can be operational in that subcluster. There are three rules that govern whether a partition is operational. The first is, if the subcluster has a majority of the nodes and at least one replica of that partition, that partition is operational, can be serviced in that subcluster. So let's see how it applies to in, in this sub, uh, cluster split situation. So if you look at this subcluster, S2, SC subcluster, it is it has six out of nine nodes, so it has the it is the majority subcluster, and it has at least one replica for each of the partition. Actually, it has exactly two replicas because each side has one replica for each partition. So, by the first rule, it can serve all the partitions. So it is it can serve all the data for the uh, after the split. What happens in the minority subcluster or S1 um, because it the only way it, by these rules it can sew a partition is if it has all the replicas and it that is not possible in rack aware distribution as we've seen. So the third rule never applies. The second rule applies in a two site cluster as we'll see later on but in this case only the first rule needs to be applied. And with that, the two assertions that we talked about in a operating subcluster, one master per partition, uh, so new master roles uh, get assumed by appropriate roster replicas, and uh, new replicas will have to get created for the loss of replicas uh, because of site failure or cluster split. So those migrations will continue to happen, but uh, those, they happen in background. And as soon as uh, 
the new state is established, the partitions become active, and this all happens within seconds. So that's how node failure as well as site failure and link failures are uh, handled in Aerospike multi-site cluster. So another uh, attribute of multi-site cluster is basically it is founded on the technology that has been in, in place for almost a decade. Uh, over these years, it's been uh, it, it has benefited from a lot of innovations like hybrid memory architecture, which uh, Aerospike was uh, you know, first to, put, to, to invent and uh, get to a million transactions per second uh, benchmark. It, it has other in inventions. The platform has other inventions, including the data distribution and smart client, a strong consistency, and so on. And it has been optimized and field tested over a decade with a large number of mission critical deployments. And, uh, and some of the customers have multi-year uptimes. And Aerospike is well known for the efficiency it brings by reducing the cluster size. The hybrid memory architecture actually can decrease the cluster size by a factor of five in some cases. And that directly goes into savings, both operational as well as cost savings. And not only because of reduced cluster size, but the inherent reliability of the software also makes it easier to operate reliably. So all of that basically means it's an optimized and proven platform. Uh, and that continues to be the case with multi-site clusters. So we'll switch the gear briefly here and talk about how developing for multi-site clusters is the same or different. So good news is fundamentally is the same as develop developing for strong consistency in single-site clusters. And there's, as I mentioned earlier, there's a separate session for developing for strong consistency that will go deeper into it. Um, but here, um, it's sufficient to mention that the APIs remain the same, but there are some different aspects that people need to be aware, developers need to be aware. And they primarily come from the nature of application and the deployment setting. And what I mean by that is the kind of applications that will target multi-site clusters will have consistency and resilience as their key considerations over performance. Not to say performance is not important, but the the reason for being for multi-site clusters is consistency and resilience. And obviously, they will also benefit from the performance that Aerospike delivers because of its efficient, efficient architecture and uh, uh, so on. Other key difference from multi, uh, for multi-site clusters is uh, the read consistency level that, uh, that needs to be specified. Um, typical recommendation for consistent, strongly consistent applications is to use session level consistency in a single site cluster. Multi-site clusters, the, the level to choose is allow replica. And the reason for that is the two, session and allow replica, are practically identical when it comes to uh, uh, the guarantees uh, for you know, uh, non-stale reads, if you will. But the performance differences are huge in multi-site clusters, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the allow replica allows local reads, whereas session reads may have to go uh, across the site to the master. And that can, can mean orders of magnitude of uh, performance difference. And last but not least, just the general awareness of inherent latencies in the multi-site cluster environment that developers need to be aware of. And they may have to do things like adjust timeout values to account for higher write latencies. So, so that's the, those are the kind of you know, similarities and differences that developers need to be aware of. 
Now we'll switch gears again and talk briefly about a couple of case studies. The first one is TIP system at European Central Bank. And TIP stands for Target Instant Payment Settlements. And the, the use case scenario there is essentially consumer to consumer payments. A consumer is making a payment to another consumer, but they don't share the same bank. So the banks had to be part of some network, and that's what TIPS enables. Um, so a TIPS system is essentially a network of regional banks. And uh, it, the requirements are multi-bank consumer payments processed within seconds at a very low cost per transaction. Uh, it is the merchants or consumers who are gets charged for this uh, at a uh, price or cost of 0.2 euro cents, thousands of payments per second, and the system has to be always on. And some of these numbers may sound a little low, uh, but the key thing to remember is these are business transactions. These are not database transactions, which could be you know millions per second. These are business transactions that entail multiple steps along the way from end to end, and they have to be orchestrated failures have had to be handled and so it's a complex uh, sequence of steps and uh, and these throughput rates are pretty impressive so the solution architecture a couple of years ago that was uh, put in place is it entailed two geographically separate data centers five node roster with replication factor of two split three two across two sites in a strongly consistent mode and so that was a couple of years ago. The, the European Central Bank since has, you know, added throughput requirements. More members, member banks have come onto the network and they decided to expand the capacity. While they did that, they also decided to add, uh, change the configuration of the multi-site cluster bit by adding a third site. And it's briefly, I would like to sort of point out that a three-site cluster brings in greater resiliency, uh, availability, um, as is basically shown in this table. Um, briefly, In a two-site cluster, you'll encounter a situation when the site goes down, whether you know you have even number of nodes or odd number of nodes. You'll always have a situation where you will have to deal with it uh, manually. So, you, you, so when a, a, a site goes down, the other site might have to be re-rostered and brought up, uh, and that's typically a manual operation. Whereas in three-site cluster, as we saw, saw earlier, it you know it, it's a, it's full it remains fully available in spite of a single-site failure. Also, for multi-node failures in a two-site cluster, if the failures are across two sites, uh, that will lead to some partitions becoming unavailable, because when two nodes go down across two sites, some partitions will have both of their replicas unavailable. And those partitions will not be available. Whereas in a three-site cluster, multiple nodes can go down across two sites and it will continue to remain available. Uh, furthermore, with two-site failures, a two-site cluster is dead, whereas a three-site cluster, after re-rostering, can be brought back. Uh, this is a Second, another cl customer who is uh, uh, deploying multi-site cluster, but key differences, it's a very similar application. The key differences in requirements are uh, the sites are separated by thousands of miles. And Aerospike is a system of record for the transactions that are happening on the system. And the solution architecture is similar, um, two-site cluster with 10 nodes, 
uh, roster with replication factor of two and a strong consistency mode, obviously. And the key difference, again, is the commit to device configuration. And what that basically enables is, uh, um, you know, when you write to all the replicas, when you're synchronously replicating to the replicas, the replica, each of the replicas actually making um, that update uh, durable to the device, is committing to the device. So you have uh, all replicas basically um, committing to device and it's extremely durable. That's the maximum durability that's possible in aerospace. So um, because it's a mission critical data, that's the configuration that, it, that they chose. So we are at the end of the presentation. I would like to summarize uh, by saying that Aerospike uh, is announcing Aerospike Database 5.0 and multi-site clustering is a big part of that release. And multi-site cluster, up in addition to XDR, they form two uh, solutions for the multi-site clustering capabilities. Aerospike multi-site cluster specifically focuses on single site, single cluster spanning multiple sites uh, in an active active fashion it it has strong consistency it has always on availability through various resiliency mechanisms it provides and it is providing all of this at a low cost and all these attributes make it a great fit for global business transactions and because of this customers are already successfully running mission critical payment processing applications at scale with multi-site clusters. So I would like to point out some of the resources. You can download these slides um, and you can click on them to you know, find out more about uh, various technologies and uh, um, multi site clusters in general. And I'd like to thank you for attending. Session and I would like to take any questions that you might have at this point. We are taking questions. I would like also like to get uh, you, uh, if you may, fill out this poll, and uh, uh, that would be very useful if you can take a couple of seconds to answer these questions. Uh, answer this question. So uh, while you are looking at this poll, I would be glad to answer any questions. So we've, we've had actually a few, a few questions uh, come in, uh, Neil. So I don't know if we want to you know, recap um, any of them, but um, I answered them as well directly. They're pre pretty good questions, uh, actually. So if you guys want to type in some more question, I guess we have a few more minutes. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at the question. So uh, let's. Uh, so let's look at the. So it's uh, how does it handle latency for remote sites running in SC mode? Does that have an impact on throughput? So that's a great question. So I think uh, a key thing to remember is reads are local, so they can happen very quick, very fast. Write latency is, uh, you know, you have you are dealing with distance and laws of physics. Basically, uh, in order to maintain the strong consistency, all replicas have to be updated in a write transaction, and uh, so they, they will take uh, longer. The latency will depend on how much the sites are separated. So, in a multi-site cluster, the sites could be separated. 
uh, and the, the latency would be ten, uh, you know a few milliseconds if the separation is you know not as much uh, up to hundred or even hundreds of milliseconds if the sites are separated are, are placed uh, on different continents uh, so so that is uh, something that you know applications uh, will be you know taking into account and there are again your know, trade-offs of uh, that that uh, you know aerospike cannot resolve but it, it, what it provides is the best performance that you can get with uh, with the with the separation of sites the next question is uh, rack failure let's say setup is two sites rf is equal to two uh, previously, in case of all rack failure, no replicas were created in remaining rack. Uh, Meher, uh, do, do you have any have recollection? recollection? Yeah, so I, I assume this was, uh, I think the answer uh, hopefully was, uh, is visible to everybody, everybody. I assume this is based on the migrate field delay. So so that's the, the new thing that can be our new, uh, was released in 431. So, so one can configure uh, with migrate field delay to prevent the other site uh, to take, you know, to, to create a second copy. But otherwise, by default, uh, no, there will a second copy would be created. Great. So, so I think there's more questions. Uh, um, uh, basically, we are at the end of the hour. We uh, and now, uh, you know, follow up session that I need to run to, but we will definitely be getting back to you with the answers through email. And I'll also point people to go to the Slack channel that available in developer hub. Um, and yeah, you can continue the discussion there. So, so thanks, thanks again, again for attending. For and uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at uh, uh, some of you in the next session. session.